Back in 1994, GM's Oldsmobile division introduced a four-door sedan that looked nothing like any car they had before, and they touted it as their new flagship model. With a brand new logo just for this car, and the Oldsmobile name conspicuously missing from its badging, the Aurora was going to be the start of an all-new design direction for Oldsmobile. But its new V8 and unique look didn't catch on with the traditional Oldsmobile buyer, and a less daring second-gen model came too late, leading to its cancellation in 2003 a year before the end of the entire Oldsmobile division. This is the story of the Oldsmobile Aurora. This is my old car. You'll be one of the lucky ones who can say that when Aurora was ready to go, so were you. See what happens when you demand better? Aurora by Oldsmobile. I've gotten several requests to feature the Aurora in a My Old Car episode, and I remember back when it was new, thinking it would be a game changer for Oldsmobile, as long as potential buyers could just get past the stigma of that name. Oldsmobiles are what my dad drove, and no matter how many times they ran ads saying it's not my father's Oldsmobile, this is not your father's Oldsmobile, it was my father's Oldsmobile. And that's exactly why, when the first Aurora's were released in early 1994 for the 1995 model year, you couldn't find an Oldsmobile badge, but more on that later. Before I get started, I'd like to thank Manscaped for sponsoring today's video and for sending me their all-in-one performance package 4.0. Manscaped has all the best tools and liquid formulations for a guy's big three odor zones, your body Bye. and Bye. Check out Manscaped's new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. We've got Bush. Their fourth generation electric waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology that reduces nicks and cuts on the most sensitive regions of your body. My plums! Also included is Manscaped's Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer with the same skin safe technology as the Lawnmower 4.0, so you don't end up like this guy. <laughs> and best of all, the all in one performance package includes Manscaped's exclusive crop preserver ball deodorant for all day body odor protection. We've got balls! And crop reviver ball toner spray with cooling aloe vera. Supersize my balls. For a limited time, if you use my promo code OLDCAR, you'll get two free gifts, Manscaped's anti-chafing boxer briefs and the Shed travel bag. Go to manscaped.com today to get 20% off and free international shipping, plus two free gifts when you use my promo code OLDCAR at checkout. Do it today before you end up like this guy. Oh. Now back to today's episode. Although Oldsmobile is one of the oldest car brands, dating back to 1897, before joining General Motors in 1908. Some of its best sales years were in the early 1980s, with 1985 being their all-time best sales year. It goes beyond the 98 in your mind to the 98 of your dreams. Wrong us. Shall we not revenge? Despite most everything they sold being a near copy of cars from other GM brands, like the Forenza or the Cutlass Sierra, the latter was one of their most popular models back then, which you can learn more about in my Cutlass episode. But in the late 80s and early 90s, some of the buying public finally started to catch on with GM's blatant badge engineering, and we're no longer fooled. You'll save 1,200 versus Century and Sierra and turn just as many heads. The poor reliability of their diesel engines severely tarnished the brand, and new Japanese luxury brands were hitting them hard. Although Ozobiel still had some loyal fans, those fans were dying off and another badge-engineered look-alike just wouldn't cut it. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. Back in the late 80s, GM commissioned a concept car, which would eventually become the design direction for the future Aurora. But it was so out there that a future production car based on it was in doubt. It was called the Tube Car Concept, and yes, that was the actual name. Probably one of the worst concept car names ever, and that name alone could have sealed its fate. But Oldsmobile, with sales now half of what they were from their 1985 peak, was desperate for a way to bring in new younger buyers and began the design of the Aurora with a tube car as a template. When the production Aurora was shown at US auto shows in 1994, it was like nothing anyone had ever seen before from Oldsmobile. That fact alone made it clear that Oldsmobile wasn't targeting buyers of cars like their legacy 88 and 98 sedans. Wait till you see how it handles. There's front wheel drive too. And if it's at all possible, try to save the car. In fact, Oldsmobile made a significant effort to distance the Aurora from the rest of their lineup, so much so that they came up with a new logo for the Aurora, replacing the legacy Oldsmobile rocket with what looked a bit like a cursive letter A. The word Oldsmobile and its rocket logo were nowhere to be found on the outside of the car, which led some to think at the time that maybe the Aurora was the start of a separate sub-brand. 
Oldsmobile was trying to target Japanese luxury car buyers with a similar concept. Introduce a new luxury brand, like Lexus, Acura, or Infiniti, that was a step above cars offered by parent companies Toyota, Honda, and Nissan. But unlike the Japanese luxury brands, the Aurora was still sold in Oldsmobile dealerships. The Aurora was based on what GM called their front-wheel drive G platform, not to be confused with the same letter GM used on various other rear-wheel drive cars in the 70s and 80s. This new G body was itself derived from the Cadillac K body platform when they downsized the Seville back in 1980. Only one other car was to share this new G body design, at least at first, and that was the 8th generation Buick Riviera. The Riviera had always been a two-door coupe, but the 8th gen was such a radical departure from previous generations, and almost every Buick that preceded it, that it would prove to be far more controversial than the Aurora, a story I may do in a future episode. One of the most radical parts of the Aurora's design, at least to me at the time, was the rear end. The full width tail lamp was a very futuristic look, an idea that some cars still have today. Inside, it had real wood accents, standard leather seats, and a wraparound cockpit design, a far cry from Oldsmobile's of the then not too distant past, with long flat dashes and bench seats. Under the hood, the Aurora offered a 4 liter double overhead cam V8, based on a similar design of Cadillac's 4.6 liter North Star V8. This was the first time that a Cadillac exclusive engine was used as a basis for any other division's engine. It made 250 horsepower with a 4-speed automatic, numbers that don't sound all that impressive today. But drivers clearly noticed a difference from previous Oldsmobiles with a far less floaty feel. This engine was also the basis for the new Aurora GTS-1 racing program, with twin turbos added to the 4-liter V8. The Aurora also made huge advances in terms of safety thanks to a unibody frame that was so strong, it broke the standard car testing machines, forcing them to use testing machines designed for truck frames, resulting in the Aurora achieving a rating that was double the federal standards for passenger cars. But all the luxury and safety features also made the Aurora the most expensive Oldsmobile up to that point, with its 1995 base price of over $31,000. That's over $57,000 in today's dollars, which definitely limited how many could afford it. But at first, that pricing wasn't really an obstacle, with 1995 sales topping well over 45,000. But sales dropped by more than 50% for 1996. Although a few minor improvements were made over the next two years, the look of the car stayed the same. Its once radical look had become more commonplace, and sales had dropped to less than 19,000 for 1999. So a new generation Aurora was in the works. By this point, the Buick Riviera was still sharing the Aurora's G-body platform, but its sales were tanking mostly because popularity of large two-door coupes had plummeted by that point, although its polarizing look didn't help, resulting in the Riviera having less than 2,000 units sold for 1999. The original plan was that the second-gen Aurora would be co-developed with the ninth-gen Riviera, but instead, the Riviera's poor sales resulted in its cancellation. Oldsmobile had already developed a concept car called the Antares, which was supposed to be the replacement of the aging 88 model. Its lineup had already shrunk in 1996 with the end of the 98, but with overall sales for Oldsmobile sliding, they instead decided to revamp the Antares to be the new Aurora, and offered no direct replacement for the 88. The latter decision, which although was probably the correct thing to do considering their financial situation, in the end resulted in a new Aurora that bared little resemblance to the car it replaced. One look is enough to get your adrenaline pumping. <laughs> but I believe this was a risk they faced with the original Aurora being a design revolution for Oldsmobile. So trying to do another revolutionary design just a few years later and maintain a futuristic look was going to be a challenge. Production began on the second gen Aurora in late 1999, but didn't go on sale until early 2000, which allowed Oldsmobile to market it as a 2001 model, so there was no 2000 model Aurora. Oldsmobile also realized the high price of the Aurora was itself impeding sales, so to help bring in more buyers, a V6 engine was offered, which was sometimes referred to as a short star since it also was based on the Cadillac Northstar V8, but with two fewer cylinders. The new Aurora's look was less aerodynamic than before, as it had more of a family resemblance with other Oldsmobile models, and it even brought back the Oldsmobile badging, although it still kept its unique Aurora logo, whereas other Oldsmobiles had switched to a revised version of their traditional Rocket logo. The redesign also eliminated a trademark look for the first Aurora, its full-width tail lamp design, replaced with a more traditional look. It also had a feature that at the time I found very distracting, and that was its rear fog lamps. I remember back then, following a second gen Aurora, when these lights were on, and since they were as bright as the brake lamps, it made me think the driver was hitting the brakes. Rear fog lamps are commonplace in Europe, but not in the United States. 
so I'm not sure what led Olds to the decision to include them here. But despite the second gen Aurora moving away from its formerly revolutionary design, or maybe because of it, sales for the 2001 model were the best for the entire Aurora run, with over 53,000 sold. The remarkably agile Aurora. You get inside it, it gets inside you. But I suspect most of those sales came before GM's announcement in December of 2000 that it had decided to phase out the Oldsmobile brand over the next four years. CBS's Anthony Mason reports the car line Olds began more than a century ago is about to go the way of the Hudson and the Rambler. This decision to allow the brand to continue another four years seemed odd to me then, since they were basically guaranteeing sales would plummet during those four years. Do you think you drive as well as your husband? Well, I think so, especially since we got our new Oldsmobile. And that is what happened with the Aurora, as sales for the 2002 model year dropped less than 11,000. For the final model year of 2003, Oldsmobile went back to only offering the V8 engine, but they still only managed around 7,200 sold. And like all the remaining Oldsmobiles, the last 500 built were sold as special commemorative editions with final 500 badging. I remember seeing one of these at a car show a couple years ago, and it was still in great shape, but I question if a final 500 model has any more real value than any other late model Oldsmobile. If you own one, let us know what you think it's worth. The Aurora ended production more than a year before the very last Oldsmobile was built, a 2004 Alero, which is a shame considering so many believe that the Aurora could have saved the brand, and yet the Aurora couldn't even last until the very end. The Aurora, a vehicle that like a fine wine has been getting better with age. The Aurora wasn't a bad idea. In fact, I think it was probably one of the best ideas Oldsmobile ever had. But when they tried to make the Aurora the best Oldsmobile by not calling it an Oldsmobile, maybe that indirectly helped seal the brand's ultimate fate. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time.